ABC Sigma Eurasia 2024 in Dubai, day two. Astrid Safarian is here at Sigma Media Lounge. Now let me introduce my guest. Maria Xenofontos, right? Yes. <laughs> An award-winning chief marketing officer, international keynote speaker in five languages, Web3 entrepreneur, advisor. Hello, Maria. Welcome to Sigma Eurasia. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Pleasure Thank you. to be here. Thank you for taking your time and uh, giving this interview to us. Uh, I would like to speak about you uh, because I see that you are specialized in many areas. So even if I try to <laughs> represent you, it will be even uh, better that you could re uh, represent yourself. So can you please tell us about you and your background, please? Sure. So my background, as you said, as you described, is a bit of um, um, a lot of things, but uh, I am in the field of blockchain mm -hmm. and I have been in blockchain since 2017 and um, I have started initially uh, with uh, one of the biggest ICO back then and then I uh, shifted to be more in deep in the industry and worked with many uh, well-known brands as mm -hmm. Ceretic and uh, so on. And then I have uh, also created uh, Femic, which is like um, a consultancy and at the same time a community. Uh, when I started Femic, I wanted to do a community for women to um, mm, encourage them to get into the industry because mm -hmm. what I understood is that there's not many women it's very crypto uh, mm, crypto is very male dominated yeah yeah and at the same time I'll also uh, as you said I am a marketing um, uh, I am in the field of marketing it doesn't matter the titles and stuff but uh, um, I'm really excited for this industry Mm -hmm. And also, I'm also a content creator. Mm -hmm. uh, I create content on my social media platforms. It's part of a marketing, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so people don't really um, understand this. Some people, they really think about what is your job and you just, they expect you to say um, just a traditional nine to five, whatever. But whatever you do, especially in this industry of uh, digital, uh, everything digital, it's you have to really show yourself mm -hmm. so it's like like being a content creator you create content and you educate people who you are what you do so you know it's it's part i think at one point being content creator will be a thing mm -hmm. now it's like okay get a real job or whatever you know <laughs> but uh yeah mm -hmm. like it's 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 actually very creative so I content creator is where i do and creative. it's not an easy job. It's well not an easy job because it takes a lot of time. Well, in the beginning, yes. But, you know, content creation, it's very knowing yourself, your preferences, what do you like, in my own experience. And I see also the ones that they really uh, succeed mm -hmm. as content creators and they're authentic. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, they are themselves, you know. So yeah. this is what I strive to do as well, to be myself. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the best thing you can do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maria, you recently gave a speech in New York City about the potential of the metaverse for uh, traditional businesses. So can you please tell us, like open the brackets and just explain a bit, what is the metaverse? How can traditional businesses benefit from the metaverse? Yes. So before I say that, I will say that the metaverse, it's a very, very, very new um, for the broad average people, not, not the ones that they're as paranoid as I am and the rest <laughs> of the people here <laughs> <laughs> to be obsessed with this industry. But uh, there is a so-called the prism uh, adoption curve. Mm -hmm. So we are now very, very early still. So the metaverse is basically a parallel reality. It's like the internet. Like we have our pro profiles on the internet and we can um, connect with someone on the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. So in, in a way, the metaverse is bringing to reality, um, it's a virtual reality, it's bringing to reality, you know. So there is a lot of the case studies um, that where it can be adapted, but it's really, really, really early still. 
So in this pitch in New York, I have given examples of brands that they have entered, mm -hmm. and it's mainly for the Gen Z audience and the uh, fashion industry that uh, they generate billions of dollars of revenue, and they were the first to give some case studies, and also the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. example, um, Roblox, and uh, also the fashion industry, they got into the metaverse through gaming. So oh, okay. yeah, so this is what I gave. But to be real, for anyone who is uh, looking into the metaverse, it's going to be something for the next 10 years, but we are still very, very early on, on this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you believe that women can uh, play a significant role in shaping the future of the blockchain industry, right? So uh, what are some of the opportunities for women in the blockchain industry? Many, <laughs> so many. Um, now I'm uh, on my 30s, but when I was uh, on during my 20s, I believe it's the age that... You look very young thank and you. very beautiful. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> but what I want to say is that during the 20s is a time that we are really, really confused as humans. Mm -hmm. You know, finishing school, what you're going to do, all this pressure and everything. So for me, it was by chance that I found crypto. Uh -huh. And in the beginning, I didn't really understood it. And then, you know, it's still very early. There's no regulations. And it still was a new world. Very new world. Mm -hmm. and, and still is. And it's still there is a lot of opportunities. What I want to say is that um, the, the dark side of this industry is that there is a lot of like, oh, um, you do you trade, you do this amount of money and blah, blah. But the real problem solving of the blockchain industry is the ownership, uh, the truth, mm -hmm. things that are really uh, problematic in the societies nowadays. And women can find a position on this field because uh, by now it was um, anything tech was um, the usual Silicon Valley people, you see on the media a, a guy with a suit. So for a woman to find role models was really difficult. And it's nothing is difficult. Mm -hmm. You can really learn anything. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities are remote working if you're a mother, um, getting paid f working from a wh whenever you are in the world and getting paid from the other side of the world. Things that happened to me. Mm -hmm. When the pandemic hit, I was in Cyprus, my home country. And then I shifted to Dubai and my company was in New York. Mm -hmm. So this is the things that people will really not believe. But then I, it's like we did, we did them as uh, standards now, like, okay. you know, and they're still er, new. So there's people that they have, they limit themselves and they think, no, no, I'm going to work in this country, in this job, but maybe you want to travel the world. So maybe mm -hmm. crypto's for you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so also to the last thing I will say, which is the most important, is that all the technical guys need women in order to have the yin and yang, and uh, you cannot have one side without mm -hmm. the other side. It, there should be both, you know, or you can have any gender or be anything, but w the empathy, the, 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 the softness that the feminine energy has. Mm -hmm. complete and also intuition, right? Yeah, intuition. Feminine intuition, yeah, which is very... I, I, I consider it as a two. Yeah. Because at times we yeah. we rely on that, yeah. on making decisions, right? True, yeah. Intuition, I believe, from my personal exp experience, is built. And it's unfortunately not learned in schools, maybe because they want to control us. I don't know. I don't know how, can <laughs> uh, how controversial I can be in this uh, interview. But even men have intuition, but we just more like wolves. Mm -hmm. The women, if they really connect themselves with their intuition, they're... Wow, like they yeah. can, you know, move mountains, and there's a, a strength. Book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's amazing. But in this industry, really, one complete the other, and uh, there should be a balance. Mm -hmm. uh, your latest keynote on how to build a successful Web three brand at the largest blockchain event in Dubai was tw in in 2023, right? So, what was it about? So in this event, uh, in this panel, sorry, I have in this keynote, <laughs> 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 because I'm confused with all the keynotes and panels I have. 
Uh, I have spoke, I have just broke down what it needs for a Web3 project to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I have talked a lot about the community. Mm -hmm. So the Web3 world is more of the user side. So it's where Web2 is more of the social media, the rise of the social media. There is one single company, for example, Facebook Meta now, worth billions. And um, who make them worth billions? The users. The users, though, they didn't never get paid and, and stuff and so on. So um, in terms of Web3, if you do not have a royal, real community, you can't have anything. Mm -hmm. So I was just breaking down the steps for, for that are necessary for any Web3 successful brand, which is not the usual expensive PR agency, but is slowly to build something that is really solving a problem mm -hmm. and then um, getting it out and building a royal community. So mm -hmm. more of being transparent and authentic again. Okay. Uh, so what is your main focus now and, and what, what are you working on currently? So now I am really uh, very deep into the blockchain world mm -hmm. as I am a pioneer and I am, um, I am, I am building more my social media uh, with aim of uh, educating women uh, and giving them um, a role model mm -hmm. and why i'm saying this now is because crypto has the market uh, periods where we see a lot of hype and then when there is a bear market when the crypto is down we see nothing all the crypto gurus and experts are uh, suddenly disappearing so but i uh, and many other experts as well thought leaders um, we want to push forward and uh, more into the adoption of uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain and really I am very excited for the future and and I am aiming to bring more education and um, advocacy for this. Mm -hmm. And my last question, Maria, uh, did, you, did you close up 2023 successfully? And as we have already knocked the door of the <laughs> 2024 and we are already in, tell us what will be the biggest project you aim to make it on this year. So I closed 2023 as a really big buy of many things. Uh, it was a really big, I took a lot of lessons last year and I'm really excited for this year, uh, growing um, emotionally, spiritually, um, and uh, professionally. And in 2024, I can't say what I'm going to do exactly, but it's very, very, very exciting things. Okay. And I cannot wait to, if anyone is interested, they can follow me. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. They can follow me, I'm joking. But uh, yes, uh, it's really excited. Um, and I aim to do more uh, self-development and growing and yeah. Maria, thank you so much for taking your time to have this interview with us. I massively enjoyed talking to you. <laughs> thank you so uh, much. I, I really, really uh, thankful to be here. Uh, I know that you have already done panels. You have already had your speeches and now there is another one to yeah, yeah. In, in the <laughs> schedule. So I wish you good luck on that. Thank you. From my side and from the Sigma group, we wish you best of luck and we wish you um, to enjoy the rest of the day and hope to see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.